ladies and gentlemen, and all the core gamers out there, CJ Man Triple Seven here, and welcome back to another Ninjala anime discussion. Today we're going to be talking about episode 15, simply titled "The Space Ninja," and this is an interesting episode that kind of proves some stuff that I've been talking about in the last couple episodes. It also kind of reveals more about the Space Ninja that I think a lot of us were kind of aware of based on what you know we have in the game and. What a lot of us could infer were based on their powers, and obviously a lot of that was confirmed true here. So, uh, in today's episode, we're going to obviously go over parts of my reaction for it, and we're going to talk about the things that were right and the things that were wrong uh, that I, you know, predicted. So, without further ado, let's get started. And of course, if you guys are enjoying the Ninjala anime discussion breakdowns, do me a favor to hit that like button as well as hitting that subscribe button for more Ninjala content and other content on the channel. So we open up our scene with a continuation of what is the last episode. And this is the Green Space Ninja being in its, obviously, its containment cage. And uh, it's trying to escape. It's trying to uh, escape based on a few parts of the last episode. So it tries to escape over and over. Unfortunately, it's not able to escape. But as we know in the last episode, someone entered the containment chamber with an authoritative WNA card. So this person is definitely in some form of power position. And not only do they walk up to the console of the Space Ninja itself, but they also decide to free the Space Ninja, which is an interesting call. Why would you want to free the Space Ninja? Why would you already want the problem of the Space Ninja to continue? Obviously, they've been doing research on it since they've captured it a few episodes ago, but... No one's sure who releases it. I'm going to say it's still Leonard. I'm going to say it's Leonard. But based on like the model of the shadow we saw, I don't think it's Leonard. Because Leonard is a bit more like built. Like bulky kind of built. Um, But the shadow we get here of the actual character who releases the Space Ninja. It's more of a thin, tall shadow. So it could be Marco who has been mentioned in the anime before. Um, But we have never ever seen Marco. Or I'm going to go way out there and say that. It was Luke? Obviously, we know the cliffhanger at the last episode. Someone let him out. The squash and stretch is unreal on that. I love that. Already adding to an air of mystery. The chief of the WNA that released the Space Ninja for a reason that we're going to talk about later in the episode. But either way, the end of the scene, the Space Ninja ends up escaping. And it's really funny because there's no dialogue. There's only Space Ninja sound effects. And it's just the Space Ninja sneaking through everything. It gets out of the WNA, or gets out of the WNA headquarters eventually. And it uses some sort of like sense it has like some sort of like ninja gum detector i'm going to call it it's it's really interesting i'm not sure if it's meant specifically to track down the ninja gum or if it's part of their you know inherent i guess shinobi abilities that they gave to humans many many years ago but we see it used multiple times throughout the episode where the the space ninja glows like pink like it is like being powered by the ninja gum itself and of course it makes its way into the wna academy where it's tracking down Ninja Gump. Such an interesting way to start an episode. There's no... It's just the sound effects of the Space Ninja. It's nothing else. How did it open the window? And I think that's intentional. Oh, 
That or it senses the ninja gum? It's, it's gotta be, it's gotta have like a sense. Now, of course, where does it end up finding ninja gum? Well, it ends up breaking into the WNA Academy, walking into Bruce's room of all places it could have broke into in the WNA Academy. It tracks the ninja gum down to Bruce's room and it freaks out. The space ninja itself freaks out when it finds that Bruce is the one guarding the ninja gum. What is he guarding the ninja gum on? He's sleeping on it. He's sleeping on a briefcase. I don't know how Bruce could be ever comfortable with that, but inside that case is the ninja gum. And the space ninja decides, I'm gonna take this. And it uses its sense to like kind of confirm that it's the uh, ninja gum itself. And it takes it and eats it. And obviously at this point, uh, the space ninja kind of gets spotted. Brutes wakes up and goes, oh God, you're that creature from before. And as much as Bruce would like to fight this thing, we get a very comedic scene with Bruce where he does not succeed at all. Me, me? ゴンバミ。ミミ。ミミ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ
Luke says. He says, my goodness, that strange life former. Oh my gosh, it has escaped. But the way he says it and the way it's implied makes me think he knows a bit more than he's letting on. So, do I think Luke might have freed the Space Ninja to set up Alan? Yes. Because when we get the WNA Council scene later, Luke goes in on Alan and it is no mercy. But then we get our main eight cast and because Bruce is out, obviously he's having a self-study day. Lucy and Emma head to the hideout, Burton and Bereka head to the hideout, although we don't see them uh, in the episode. Ron and Jane do their own thing and Van and Cappy decide we're going to do a kendo stick duel. And that's exactly what they do. And they cut away from that scene. Nothing really crazy because Bruce is out, they have to self-study. Um, but it's kind of putting characters in positions that they need to be. Uh, the only two that you really need to know that their positions are in is uh, Van and Cappy and Lucy and Emma because they do get some action with the Space Ninja uh, a little bit later. So, obviously, the Space Ninja that attacked Bruce last night is somehow still on the campus. It didn't decide to run away. It's probably been trying to bide its time, run away, sneak out. Uh, unfortunately, it's not able to do that because not only do you have the little assistants from the WNA, the little assistant guys from the WNA guarding everything, but now you also have members of the Oni Wambashu uh, also walking around and helping try and find the Space Ninja as Alan assembled the Oni Wambashu a little bit later. So this little green Space Ninja decides, all right, I'm going to go up to uh, this new, uh, this different area in the Academy. And in this area, the Academy runs into Van and Cappy, who are playing, who are doing a candlestick kind of duel, and it's basically they're going to be first to land a hit. Now, Cappy starts to attack Van pretty rapidly, pretty aggressively, and the Space Ninja thinks that Cappy is attacking it. And what ends up happening is when Cappy goes for a blow onto Van, the Space Ninja shoots a shot of, it's like Space Ninja gum at... Cappy, and it lands on the counter stick, knocking Cappy back. And Cappy obviously thinks that's Van, um, you know, just throwing something at him in the middle of a fight. When, in fact, it's not the case. And Van even says, wait, that green slime looks familiar. And Cappy just kind of shrugs it off that it's not a problem. But shortly after, of course, as they try and go back again, the Space Ninja decides to reveal itself. And Van and Cappy go on the defensive as the Space Ninja now comes out from hiding. And it's not scared of Van and Cappy. Van and Cappy obviously are also wondering, what the heck are you doing here? We're not scared of you either. So they decide, let's go double team this with the kendo stick. And you can see how that went. Whoever lands the first hit, Epon is uh is actually known as a as a point in uh it's just like a sport. Epon is a, a, meant as a sport point. そんな<笑> It didn't seem like it wanted to attack at first. It thought it was being attacked. There's the case. So, you know, Ban and Cappy, they didn't do a bad job. They didn't do a bad job of dealing with the Space Ninja with the Kendo Sticks. And they're able to knock out the Ninja Gum case that this Space Ninja had. And they both questioned the Space Ninja, what are you doing with this? And this is where the Space Ninja goes a little bit on the defensive. Because the Space Ninja obviously grabbed the piece of that Ninja Gum that fell out of the case. And consumes it. And here's where the interesting part is because of the Space Ninja. Uh, for the Space Ninja. Not only does it consume the Ninja Gum itself. And it gets that pink glow. But then because of it, it multiplies. Which is an ability we have not seen the normal Space Ninja be able to do. But it seems like this is how they seem to 
multiply. They use the ninja gum, which has been researched probably with their DNA in it based on what we've seen and what we understand of the lore of the game where the Space Ninja might have given human shinobi powers way, way back in the day and they're coming to reclaim it because now it's being used for the wrong purposes, but that's, uh, they're also attacking the main eight characters because they think the main eight characters are also using them for the wrong purposes when in fact it's Alan who decided, hey, we have full production of Ninja Gum, just we're going to keep doing it. So, unfortunately, because the Space Ninja multiply, Van and Cape don't get a really good opportunity to deal with them because not only do the Space Ninja multiply once, but they consume more Ninja Gum and multiply twice. So now there's four of them. Whoa! Are they gonna multiply again? Or are they just- They are! Interesting. Unfortunately, Van and Cappy aren't able to do anything as they're just forced to go on the defensive and dodge. Now, this is when the only one Bashu show up and they start tracking down the Space Ninja. And the Space Ninja, obviously, very quickly, they want to get away. And, um, they managed to get on the trail of WNA Academy. But the only one Bashu uh, that have Alan, have, uh, Alan has sent to track them down, very vigilant, and they're constantly going after the Space Ninja. But they managed to escape and find the hideout wall that was established in the last episode, where, of course, Lucy and Emma are. But before we get to Lucy and Emma, we're going to talk about the WNA Council, the actual discussion of what the heck happened with the Space Ninja they were researching. So, first thing we learn. Actually, I'll just, I'll just play the scene. It's a lot easier to show you. DNA配列を解析したところ、地球上のどの生物とも一致しませんでした。つまりこの生命体は地球外生物であると判明しました。なんと、またニンジャガムが彼らを招き寄せたという That would be blaming for and Baraka. I like. I can't Luke's reaction and his the way he's sitting and his the smirk on his face going might we take that to mean it was the ninja gum which threw the space ninja here in the first place remember how I said that I think Luke might might be the one to free the space might have been the one to free the space ninja at the beginning of the episode although I doubt it I think this is why because he starts roasting and going after Alan in this very scene. He says things like, all right, well, if it was the ninja gum that drew them here in the first place, uh, I think the problem is that, is it the reason they were drawn here is because, well, we decided to start mass producing the ninja gum at somebody's behest. So if we hadn't produced the ninja gum, this wouldn't be the problem. If we had not been able to contain this problem, it would have been a problem. And Luke also goes, perhaps those responsible for the development should also be held at fault, which... Obviously, that's Burton, Barak, and Ron. They're technically the ones that invented the Ninja Gum, uh, the WNA Academy. But Luke is, Luke is the, like, the lead, the big guy of the WNA Academy. He's the current, like, leader, and he's going, mm, maybe we should put the researchers at fault. And I thought Gen Ryusai, because he is part of the council, was going to jump up here and say it wasn't the, the fault that 
they were they didn't know what they were researching. I think Alan had more to do with the research of the ninja gun that we know. Um, at this point, based on what Luke says in this scene, but he he's just going after Alan the entire time, saying, "Hey, maybe we should hold you responsible for wanting to mass produce it. Maybe we should destroy all of our ninja gun reserves so the space ninja kind of go back." And they cut they cut over to Alan, and Alan is just not happy. Um, so the the council kind of gets into this this argument and they go well the ninja gum has been nothing but a benefit to the wna and while that may be true it's also created more problems for the wna so luke goes okay well i agree on that and obviously we can't do what's been undone so but we can prevent future measures by destroying our destroying our ninja gum reserves and maybe we can you know save our our planet from any future celestial visitors um it's a very interesting conversation. I mean, technically, again, Ryusai says maybe we can do that uh, to stop, you know, visitors. But Luke goes, we have to just halt the, the uh, use and production of all ninja gum, obviously, because they think that at this point in space, that's what's drawing the space ninja here. And I think that's true. I think that's what's drawing the space ninja here in the first place. And obviously, when Luke mentions they want to destroy the supply, Alan's reaction is priceless. Um, his face is priceless. Uh, it's on model and priceless. And... That's all we really get from this scene. Luke is kind of wanting to expose Alan for all of his, like, shady stuff. But I also think Luke kind of acted as the bad guy in this scenario because he knows something's wrong with Alan. As he, as Genryu Usai mentioned, he has a hard time keeping Alan in line. So Luke might be thinking, yeah, Alan's got something hidden up his sleeve a little bit that he doesn't know. So he's like, okay, well, if this is the problem, the WNA, if, this is, if you don't want to stop any of that... The WNA can take responsibility and eliminate these creatures. However, I suggest that you only use the best members of the Oniwan Banshu to eliminate the threat. And Alan, of course, reluctantly agrees on this because he absolutely has to. He wants to ensure the success, and he's very serious when he says it. So then, obviously, after the WNA Council scene, we cut back to Lucy and Emma, and we obviously have the four space ninja as they come into the hideout obviously we established that lucy and emma were both listening to music however lucy seems to have this sick sense and when the space ninja kind of show up and decide we're going to leave lucy gets up with the most smug expression on her face and she goes well if you come this far we ought to call you we ought to we ought to quote unquote play and by play she means deal with the space ninja space ninja not having that space ninja very angry and we get the most smug and sassy Lucy throughout the entirety of this scene. So Lucy goes, okay, well, there's four of you. Is this payback for when I destroyed one of you last time? And the Space Ninja are not having it. Of course, Emma now realizes exactly what is going on. And Lucy and the, the model shots, whoever did Lucy, by the way, whoever did Lucy in these scenes, absolutely incredible animator. Um, the, uh, ex displaying Lucy's, like, confidence in sass and the way they drew her the way they animated her perfect absolutely perfect and it's a good scene is he thinking about Burton and Bereka now because they are the ones who developed it <laughs> Lucy's sixth sense Emma quickly says to Lucy, if you want to fight here, the place is going to get awfully slimy. And Lucy goes, oh, I don't want that. This place is nice. So Space Ninja decide, all right, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. They don't want to deal with Lucy and or Emma. But Lucy and Emma, going to give chase. Absolutely going to give chase. And much like Van and Cappy, they are able, even without Ninja Gum, to uh, kind of put one of the... Space Ninja in a corner, and Lucy coming in with some cool roundhouse kicks, and just actual, like, kicks and, and punches and stuff like that. Lucy doing a great job and ends up knocking the briefcase of Ninja Gum, yet again, out of the main Space Ninja that took it, and 
quickly, Lucy snatches up the last couple pieces, and Lucy and Emma decide, all right, it's time to fight the Space Ninja. And we get a really good scene for this. The eye! The eye! Yeah, let Lucy have a little fun. Yo, Lucy just went for a roundhouse kick? Shots though. The enemies are having fun with you can tell they're having fun with this particular section. Nothing's too off model here in terms of an act in terms of an action sequence. It's not intentionally off model. Well they can merge. mistake now i like that scene uh, uh, up until emma gets captured because the space it shows that the space ninja as they eat the ninja gum they can evolve they do evolve as they eat the ninja gum and i think that's such a dangerous factor in general they can they're faster after they eat ninja gum they're faster after they multiply they can merge together into one creature and become a stronger version of that type of space ninja which i just think it's such an interesting concept, and obviously we got a little bit of that in Story Mode Chapter 1 as well, but they did a really good job showing how powerful the Space Ninja are if they are the true origins of how the Ninja Gum project uh, kind of started, where way back in the day the Space Ninja came to Earth and gave, I guess in, in this universe, gave the powers of Shinobi to the humans to use to better the world. And then, obviously, they're coming back to retake it because they think uh, some of the cor there's corruption in the world. That's a valid reason for the Space Ninja, but they are a bit of a nuisance, and they are... I guess the, I guess the way to put the Space Ninja is controlled chaos. Um, they have, they're, like, they're in a ways where it is very controlled, it's very chaotic, because they think that, at this point, maybe the human race is not worthy of the powers of Shinobi, so they're coming to take the Ninja Gum and take all of it away. But, obviously, the descendants of Shinobi, as they go through the years, have we seen with Cape, Van, and, and the remaining characters, they all have good hearts, right? They all have good hearts, but the Space Ninja don't see it that way. The Space Ninja only see the corruption side. So, they're willing to take whatever they can to remove Ninja Gum and then disappear, most likely. Um, so, they, they are like a controlled, chaotic force in a way, which I think is, is really interesting. But it gets to a point in this scene where the Space Ninja knocks off Lucy's eye patch. And Lucy says, uh-uh, not anymore. And <clears throat> absolutely decimates the Space Ninja with her metal bending ability and destroys it. And I love the personality shift Lucy has when that eye patch gets knocked off. She turns into like a literal demon. Uh, not, not a little, well, her inner demon, her inner evil side, her inner demonic side kind of comes out when that eye patch isn't covered. Kind of like, the, the eye patch obviously is repressing the ability is what it's meant to do. Uh, because Lucy's change of personality completely changes the way, uh, she functions during that whole scene. Um, and Emma is shocked by this. Emma, Emma looks surprised by Lucy's ability. But, based on the next episode preview when all the kids are, all the ninja kids are actually going on their first actual mission emma goes i need to learn more about lucy's ability so emma finds it really cool not that not that lucy's a monster like lucy's other uh, other friends but um or i should say lucy's former friends but emma finds it really interesting she wants to know why and 
how Lucy got this ability maybe in the next episode. So obviously next episode is going to focus around Emma and Lucy uh, more. But with that Space Ninja's destruction, that's all we get. Um, they get a call, most likely from Lucy or Emma. They, I'm assuming they have contact with anybody or Lucy and Emma went back to the Genryu side. We don't actually know what happened, but basically they said Lucy and Emma recovered the case of Ninja Gum. Um, they won back the missing you-know-what. And uh, we get a scene with Amy and Bruce, and Bruce is so happy. Uh, and Van and Cappy are there, and it's a really, it's a really cute scene. Bruce without his sunglasses also is a completely different character. Uh, and we've established, and we established that in the last couple episodes. And I love seeing Bruce without the sunglasses, because he is a different, uh, he is a different person. And we get, uh, a sweet little scene with, uh, kind of Cappy and Van at the end there. But Cappy is so off-model here, it bugs me. Oh, it bugs me. The no, it, it uh, the angle of the face isn't bad, but Kappa's nose is too far to the left, so it does, it puts the spacing between his eyes super different, um, and it's really weird. Like, Van and Amy are on model, but Kappa's face, oh god, ah! There's a couple moments like that, uh, throughout this episode that I'm not a, a big fan of, but, you know, it is what it is, and it is what, it is what's done, but... That's pretty much the episode. This episode kind of went by really quick. Uh, just kind of discovering some Space Ninja. Maybe kind of putting some theories out there of who freed the Space Ninja to begin with. Why the Space Ninja might be back. And well, I think we knew why they were going to be back anyway. We've been talking about that over the last couple episodes. But at the end of this episode, we get... Obviously, they always like to end their episodes on a cliffhanger. But another branch of the Space Ninja have emerged. And these ones are the purple ones with the vests. Uh, and it comes out of the sewer, and we get this really evil, evil uh, look at these Space Ninja in particular. And they make a very, very, very similar sound to Gumchi. Ah. Ah. And it's... A Actually, seeing how they did the shot with the eyes big and then they shrank the eyes to make them look more terrifying. Genius last shot uh, for the anime. Very, very well done. But uh, in terms of how this episode went, I feel like it went by really fast. Now, granted, I've been recording a lot of videos this morning. I've recorded three separate videos this morning. A lot of them are talking. A lot of them are analyzing trailers. Stuff like that. I like the episode, obviously, besides all the off-model stuff. And next episode, once again, we'll most likely focus around Lucy and Emma, which I'm all for because Lucy is the best girl. I don't really have too many theories or, or lore to talk about. I think I kind of broke down everything that came to my mind uh, in this episode talking about it with you guys uh, here saying who might have freed the Space Ninja, why the Space Ninja are actually here. And a lot of the episode also confirms this, so there's not really, like, any super big speculation i need to talk about or anything but i want to know what you guys thought about this episode as well down in the comments section below um let me know what you think the space ninja are like truly here for are they only here for the ninja gum are they here to cause chaos are they here to take the ninja gum completely away from the human race are they here to remove shinobi abilities from the descendants because again they they act as like controlled chaos almost in like in their own organization and obviously who do you think freed the Space Ninja? I want to hear your guys' theories on that. And other than that, of course, if you guys enjoyed this Ninjala uh, at this anime episode discussion, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments section down below. And uh, yeah, if you guys, of course, enjoyed this uh, next Ninjala anime discussion, uh, this latest, I should say, Ninjala anime discussion, uh, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button as well. Obviously, we got a long way to go. I do these Ninjala anime reactions every week i do have some other ninjala videos planned i have a lot of other videos planned over the next couple weeks i'm going to be a very busy person on my days off uh aside from animating and video editing i got i got a lot to do over these next couple weeks so i want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to watch this video and leave some feedback if you haven't already and of course i will see you in the next video and until then this is caj man triple seven signing off stay safe everybody